Hi again, folks. I hope you're doing well. In today's video lecture, we're gonna talk about how to make a useful outline for your speeches. As a part of my training as an undergraduate and then as a graduate student and even now as a professor, I have given a lot of public presentations. In my mind, a successful presentation often begins and sometimes even ends at the outline. Now, having said that, I rarely create a super formal, rigidly structured outline for myself whenever I'm writing a speech. I do, however, always begin presentations the same way. I start by asking myself the question, what do I hope to accomplish in this speech? Then I answer that question and sort of reverse engineer my speech from there. Everything, my thesis, every point and subpoint that I wanna make, and my concluding remarks, all of that needs to help me achieve my goal or the goals that I've set out in my speech. So whatever it is that I'm trying to accomplish, everything has to plug back into and forward that. And this should be the case for you in your speeches as well. So if you're reviewing a film in a speech, let's say, everything that you say, so if you provide a brief introduction of the film, its title, director, actors, a plot synopsis, your thesis, and then the body of your speech and the conclusion, all of that should be about evaluating the film and you should end with a clear recommendation. If you're making an informative or persuasive speech or even a toast at a party, the same principle should apply. Every point and subpoint and transition needs to be designed to help you effectively communicate your message. Okay, so if you want an example of how your outline might look, there's one on the D2L course site. To find the sample outline, you'll need to click content on the D2L course page and then click assignment instructions, then sample outline, and finally click on sample outline to view or download a PDF of said outline. The outline is avail also available in the appendix section of the course textbook, which you can find under the readings tab on D2L. Here are two screenshots of that outline. Go download this and give it a look uh, and a thorough review. As you do, keep in mind that this is just a model, although it is a good one. Don't feel obligated to copy this exactly. You can, certainly, but there is no one-size-fits-all model or perfect outline. What works for me might not work for you. Keeping that in mind, I want to provide you with some basic things that you'll want to cover in your outline. First, you need an opening. This is your chance to command your audience's attention. Be bold and confident, boost your charisma stats any way that you can, so to speak. This isn't a time to be shy or ramble or small talk. After that, tell the audience very clearly what it exactly it is that you hope to accomplish. What is this speech about? What is your goal or purpose? What is your thesis? Be kind and clear to your audience. For example, let's say I was gonna give a speech in one of my pop culture classes. I might do something like this. I'd begin with, in this speech, or today, I'm gonna to talk about or explore the central role of the Force in the Star Wars multimedia franchise. Drawing on the work of Sigmund Freud, Joseph Campbell's concept of the monomyth, and affect theory, I will argue that the Force is, then say whatever you know it is that you're gonna argue. Maybe it's that the Force is a sentient entity with agency, doesn't actually exist. Maybe it's sort of a plot spackle for filling in plot holes, or maybe it's the central character of the Star Wars franchise. Right, I told you what it is that I'm going to do, I gave you a bit of info about my theoretical orientation, and then I previewed my argument. If an audience member fell asleep right then and there, and then woke up at the end of the speech, hypothetically, they should be able to tell you what the speech was about. After you tell your audience what it is that you hope to achieve, preview your main points. So after saying I'm going to make an argument about the role of the Force in Star Wars, I could say, to do this, I will compare and contrast both the dark and light side force powers in the original trilogy, the prequels, and the sequel trilogy. This brings us to the body of the speech, which will, by and far, make up the bulk of your speech, probably 80 or more percent if you want to think about it that way. The body is where you're going to build your argument. You need to have about two or three points. Again, you're going to want to streamline. So you have, let's say, three points. So the force moves through or operates in living beings might be your first point. Your subpoints could be details or lines of inquiry that support that first uh, main point, number one. And all of your main points, one, two, and three, all support your overall argument. So the overall argument could be that the force is powerful or sentient or good or evil or whatever. Every claim that you make needs to be supported by evidence, and that will vary, that kind of evidence will vary from topic to topic. It could be statistics, news reports, scholarly articles or books, documentaries, archival documents, stories, and so on. We'll unpack the research side of things later in the semester. Finally, you'll conclude. There's an adage in relation to writing and speeches that I think you should commit to memory and practice. You've probably heard it before. It goes like this. Say what you're going to say, say it, say what you said. The expression maps onto the opening, the body, and conclusion of your speech, and it's good practice. 
when you conclude, remind the audience what it is that you were trying to accomplish and how you went about doing just that. Lastly, you want to include transitions between each of these sections of your speech. This helps smooth out your delivery, it guides your listener, and is it's a social expectation, frankly. Speeches feel off when they don't have transitions. Likewise, they can feel weird or off when you use overly clunky or stilted transitions. So try your best to sort of bob and weave through your speech in a way that feels natural. You're not gonna produce the same kind of outline for review of let's say Marvel Studios 2019 film Avengers Endgame as you would an informative speech about the life of Charles II of Spain or a persuasive speech in which you advocate for the importance of widespread adherence to COVID-19 face mask guidelines issued by the CDC. Context and intent will determine not only the tone and focus of your presentation, but also how you'll need to go about organizing your thoughts when you first begin drafting out your speech. Again, there is no one size fits all model. The important part of all of this is that you're not just winging it. You're developing a strategy ahead of time, measuring and weighing your options and designing your speech. To that end, remember that outlines are working documents. They don't have to be perfect. An outline is kind of like behind the scenes, pre-production material or a setup for a finalized product that will be viewed by the public. In the artificial context of a classroom setting, I'm gonna be reviewing your outlines to help you improve the structure and flow and focus of your speeches. In other words, these materials will be seen now, but in most scenarios where you're delivering a public address, all of this behind the scenes work will remain behind the scene. So keeping this in mind, I do not care what font, as, not, as long as it's not something terrible like Comic Sans or Wingdings, um, or the general formatting conventions that you use in your outline. So I don't care about those things so much. Uh, it needs to be clear and legible. It is a working document and a blueprint for your finalized performed speech. I will offer critical feedback that's supposed to help you revise and improve your speech before you deliver it. So please don't panic. Uh, you'll get better at this the more you do it, and you'll eventually even figure out your own style and approach to preparing and organizing materials for public display in the future. Over the course of the summer semester, you will make and submit two speech outlines to me. The first is for the media review speech from uh, week number two, and the second outline will cover the argumentative or persuasive speech, which is due during week five. I'll be providing more specific details about how to produce both of these outlines in subsequent video lectures. For now, we'll stop here. Take care.